This movie is about a young guy named Hayama. One day, he's up on the roof of a building, checking out the city with binoculars. Then he gazes up at the blue sky, looking kinda sad. But let's go back a few years. Hayama's in the third year of high school. He's the quiet type, not too friendly, and doesn't have many friends. Most of the time, you'll find him sitting by himself, staring out the window. Meanwhile, other students are busy chattering away with their pals. One morning, his class has to team up for a race with rice bags, and nobody wants to partner with Hayama. He's got this gloomy vibe, so no one's really eager to hang out with him. But then, this cheerful and pretty girl named Yuamura steps up and asks him to be her partner. It surprises everyone, cause nobody expected it. Hayama and Uemura have known each other for ages, cause they're neighbors, and went to the same middle school. Back then, Hayama was kinda popular, but things changed after his older brother passed away. He became a loner and got all gloomy. He didn't really hang out with anyone, not even Mamura. Plus, he got into reading books about death. Hayama's buddies thought his habit was weird, so they kinda ignored him. Wimura asked Hayama to practice the rice bag race thing together during gym class the next day. But it didn't go well because they couldn't get the hang of it and ended up falling. While they were practicing, Hayama asked Wimura why no one else wanted to team up with him. Wimura just shrugged it off and said it was because Hayama seemed so gloomy that no one wanted to be around him. The next day, Hayama was chilling in the school garden, reading one of those death-themed books he always had with him. Wimura came up and asked why he read the same book over and over again. Turns out, Hayama always had that book with him. During recess, they practiced the rice bag race again. This time, Hayama suggested they switch positions to jump better and faster. It worked, and they jumped way farther than before. After practice, they sat down together and had a cold drink. Hayama, feeling more at ease with Wimura, ended up opening up about the day his older brother died. He shared how he felt sad because the sky looked just like it did that day. But Wemura didn't know how to respond, so she made up an excuse about practicing relay running and left Hayama. Every day after school, Hayama would stop by his older brother's grave to say a prayer. His brother meant the world to him, and letting go was really tough. One morning at school, while Hayama was lost in a book, Wemura showed up with a bag full of books about death that she'd found at home. She brought them on purpose to tell Hayama, that it's important not to dwell too much on the loss of loved ones and to try to move forward with life. Those words left Hayama speechless, and he couldn't stop thinking about what Yuemura had said. Then we fast forward to the school sports festival day. Hayama and Yuemura were on the same team, the red team. They were initially in last place, but through teamwork and hard work, they managed to win the rice bag race. Afterward, they looked tired but really happy. Once the race was done, they sat on the sidelines and had a chat. During the conversation, Wimura mentioned that she had made a promise to herself that if they won, she'd confess her feelings to Hayama. She went ahead and asked him if he'd like to date her. Sadly, Hayama declined because he was still struggling to cope with the loss of his older brother. The next day, Hayama met up with Wimura to give back the books she'd lent him before. Wimura, still upset about Hayama, turning down her confession, replied grumpily that she'd given him the books and he could give them away if he wanted. Then, she left in a huff. Seeing Yuemura acting strangely, Ayama realized he'd hurt her feelings with his rejection. The following day, Wimura unexpectedly didn't show up at school. When Hayama noticed this, he felt guilty, thinking maybe Wimura skipped school because she was embarrassed about his rejection. So when he got back home from school, Hayama decided to visit Wimura's house. However, it turned out that Wimura was sick with the flu, not avoiding school because of him. To cheer her up, Hayama brought two bottles of the soft drinks Wimura always had at school. Soon after, he opened up to Wimura and confessed that he liked her too, but he was afraid of loving someone because he didn't want to go through the pain of losing them. Coincidentally, Wimura's grandmother overheard their conversation. Ayama noticed her and greeted her. It turned out that Wimura only lived with her grandmother because her parents had left her when she was little. One afternoon, Hayama and Wimura decided to take a walk on the outskirts of their village. They talked about their college plans after they graduated. Wimura seemed super excited and had lots of ideas for what she wanted to do in college. On the other hand, Hayama seemed like he hadn't really figured out his college plans yet. When graduation day finally came, Hayama quietly told Wimura that he wanted to study at the same place as her. Wimura was so surprised that she couldn't help but shout out, and everyone in the library turned to look at them. Wimura was shocked because she had her heart set on going to Nishimen Women's University, 
and Hayama couldn't possibly apply there. In the end, Hayama decided to attend Mayu Institute. Once they got to college, Hayama and Uemura officially started dating. They often went on dates to their favorite fried chicken restaurant. Uemura really liked shaking hands with the statue of an old grandpa outside the restaurant. She believed it gave her the courage to face her daily life. One day, while Hayama and Uemura were having lunch together, Hayama's college buddy Sukahara happened to show up at the restaurant. Sukahara gave back a notebook that Hayama had lent him earlier. Wenmura was happy to see Hayama making friends and praised his kindness. Later on, Hayama and Uemura decided to go up to a rooftop to check out the city view with binoculars. It was a spot that Mura used to visit with her grandma when she was little. When she saw an old couple up there, all happy together, Mura told Hayama that she wished for a lifelong friend like that old couple. While they were enjoying ice cream together, Wenmura mentioned how much she loves kids and dreams of becoming a teacher for children. She explained that she grew up without her parents and only lives with her grandparents. That's why she wants to give the love she missed out on to kids who didn't have their parents' care and love. Hayama was surprised to learn all this because Wenmura hadn't talked about her family situation before. He looked kind of sad and disappointed because he didn't know much about her. Another time, when Hayama was on vacation in Thailand, he shared his feelings of disappointment about Uemura with a group of Japanese moms he was hanging out with. One of them said that some things in life are best kept private. Hearing that, Hayama realized he didn't need to know everything to make their relationship better. When Hayama came back to Japan, he wasted no time and asked Uemura to join him for a meal at their usual fried chicken spot. While they waited in line, Uemura mentioned that when Hayama was away in Thailand, she got bored and decided to visit Australia. She admitted that she was used to doing things alone, but hoped that one day they could do something together. The next day, Hayama and Uemura went back up to the rooftop to use the binoculars and had a fun time mimicking people on the streets. Afterward, Uemura shared her wish to have three kids because she wanted to experience what it's like to have a complete family. Now, let's fast forward three years. Uemura is in her final semester of college and working as a substitute teacher at a kindergarten. On the other hand, Hayama is busy with a part-time job at a factory. One day, while they were having a meal together, Wimura suddenly mentioned that she wanted to end their relationship. This surprised Hayama, and he asked her why. But Wimura didn't give a clear reason and started talking about other unrelated things. It seemed like she was keeping something to herself. Two weeks after Hayama and Yomura broke up, his friend Tsukuhara invited him to hang out with some other friends to help him move on from Wimura. At the gathering, Hayama met a girl named Amiri, who attended the same college. Amiri made an effort to get close to Hayama, and he started to open up to the idea of building connections with other people. One day, Amiri invited Hayama over to her place for some fried chicken. After trying Amiri's cooking, Hayama was really impressed and told her how delicious it was. Their bond grew stronger from then on. While working at the factory with Sukahara, Hayama thought about how things were going with Amiri. Sukahara mentioned that Uemura was happy that Hayama had found someone new, even though that wasn't quite the truth. The reality was that Uemura still had feelings for Hayama. The next day, when Hayama went to his brother's funeral, he happened to see Uemura praying at the grave. Hayama asked her why she was there, and Uemura explained that she felt guilty for ending their relationship on her own. Hayama pressed further, asking why she wanted to break up with him. Uemura claimed it was because her grandmother didn't approve of their relationship, but it seemed like she was hiding the real reason. Meanwhile, Hayama and Amiri were getting closer. Amiri seemed to really like Hayama, but he didn't feel the same way and was unhappy in the relationship. He realized he still loved you, Amira, and never really loved Amiri. The next day, he went to Amiri's house to end their relationship because he didn't want to be in a relationship just because of circumstances. That night, Hayama went to Imura's place and asked her to give their relationship another chance. But if Imura was firm about wanting to end things, feeling heartbroken, Hayama locked himself in his room for weeks until Sukahara came to visit and tried to cheer him up. The next day, Hayama went back to college and tried to go on with his daily life. However, he still thought about his moments with Imura from time to time. The following day, Hayama decided to visit the kindergarten where Imura worked. It turned out that Imura was on leave because she had fallen ill and was getting treatment at the hospital. When Hayama went to see her at the hospital, Uemura finally confessed that she was undergoing treatment for a uterine tumor. Her condition was severe, and she had to undergo surgery to remove her uterus, which meant she couldn't have children. 
After hearing all this, Hedayama wanted to be with Uemura even more and promised to stand by her side until she recovered. That evening, Hedayama went to Uemura's room and gently touched her face. An elderly lady in the neighboring room struck up a conversation with Hayama. Through their talk, Hayama finally understood why Uemura had decided to break up with him. She didn't want him to experience losing someone he loved again, as he once mentioned that he was afraid of falling in love and losing that person. Hayama expressed his desire to make Uemura's wish of having a family come true, because she had never experienced a complete family since childhood. The next day, while Hayama was using the binoculars they used together to watch the street, he spotted Yumura crying on top of a building. Concerned, he rushed to the hospital to support her. On the way, he picked up the old man's statue from their favorite fried chicken place to give to Yumura at the hospital. Along the way, he reminisced about the times they spent together. When Hayama reached the hospital, he told Yumura that she was the most important person in his life, and he wanted to stand by her side until she recovered. He assured her that he would be with her no matter what, even if they couldn't have children. After that, Hariyama suggested that Uemura shake hands with the statue of the old man to find the courage to face her illness. The day after, Uemura had a successful surgery, and she made it through just fine. When Uemura left the operating room, her grandma asked Hariyama to take care of Uemura forever. A few days later, once Uemura had recovered from the surgery, they went back home together, holding hands. The movie ends with a scene where Hayama kisses Uemura while they're sharing a meal, and they can finally be happily together in their relationship. So the moral of the story is don't judge a book by its cover, and sometimes the person who surprises you the most is the one who can change your life in the silliest and most unexpected ways.